So if control of the House of Representatives does change hands in November, Republican leaders have already promised a slew of investigations and hearings into the Biden administration. Potential future Speaker of the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy has threatened to launch an investigation into the Attorney General and DOJ in response to the Mar-a-Lago search. The soon-to-be-retired Dr. Anthony Fauci and the Secretary of Homeland Security are also likely targets for a Republican majority. Author Robert Kuttner writes about this impending inquisition in a new piece for The American Prospect, quote, Republicans are salivating over the prospect of taking control of the House, not because of their power to legislate. President Biden still holds the veto pen, but because of their power to harass. Prospective GOP committed chairs in waiting are already laying plans for multiple inquisitions. Top of the list? Attorney General Merrick Garland and his investigation and likely prosecution of former President Trump. As Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who would become Speaker, wrote after the search of Mar-a-Lago, the Attorney General should preserve your documents and clear your calendar. FBI Chief Christopher Wray, also a prime target. A Republican appointed by Donald yeah. Trump. Another of the Republican ultras... Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio, a close McCarthy ally, would become chair of the Judiciary Committee, a prime focus, locus of harassment of the Justice Department. And Robert Kuttner joins us now, also with us for this conversation, former senior advisor for the House Oversight Committee, Kurt Bardella. Good to have you both with us. Mr. Gunner, thanks so much for being with us. You know, we, we have all of these threats uh, that, that are they're out. I guess it's to intimidate. You have Lindsey Graham uh, actually going all the way, going full fascist, threatening violence if Donald Trump is actually held to account and if the laws apply to Donald Trump like they would to, say, Lindsey Graham. Uh, but you also had Newt Gingrich for some time saying that members of the January 6th committee uh, should face jail time, should expect to be prosecuted in the future. Uh, the extremism, uh, the politicalization uh, of, of, of this, uh, criminalization of politics, uh, reaching all new levels now with these Republicans who may be running Congress. Well, some of this uh, is is pure harassment. Uh, I mean, the case of Hunter Biden uh, or, or the case of Fauci, who's going to be 82 years old. The man is leaving office and they're still going to go after him for this fable about the, the virus uh, originating in labs of, in Wuhan. And, and they're faulting him for not finding out about it. So some of this can be dismissed as pure harassment. Some of it, I guess you could almost excuse as sort of ordinary oversight when the opposition party takes power. But the really alarming thing, the most alarming thing is to go after the attorney general and the FBI when an active investigation is in progress to try and interfere with the ability of the nation's chief law enforcement officer to, to do a criminal investigation um, that's really messing with the separation of powers in a, in a very fundamental way. And the other thing that, 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 that's, that, that that's really very troubling here is that they are going to go after the January 6th committee. They're going to they're do their own version of a January 6th report. The only good thing I can say about this is that this kind of stuff, if they actually do it, you know, tends to backfire politically. I, I, I mean, as we, we heard uh, from Senator Gillibrand, uh, voters are sick of this stuff. And Republican extremism seems to be backfiring. The only thing we can hope is that it backfires in time for November, uh, especially with reproductive rights being so powerful in so many races, so that the Republicans don't get a chance to do this. Uh, and that prospect is actually in the last two or three weeks, as, as you know, looking so much brighter than it did early on, of course, most recently with, with Sarah Palin losing and a Democrat taking that seat in Alaska. So maybe, maybe we will be spared this fate. So, Kurt, let's play the game, though, that if the Republicans do win and they do take the House, this is a scenario that you, of course, know well, having worked for the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. So maybe scare us a little bit. What would this look like? GOP has control. They've got the power of the subpoena. What do they do? Well, Jonathan, on day one of the new Congress, they are going to send a slew of subpoenas to the White House, to the Biden administration. They're going to start going after Hunter Biden. They're going to start going after Department of Homeland Security. They're going to scrutinize and investigate 
every single decision that has been made by this White House, and they're going to look to politicize everything. It's the same playbook they used against Barack Obama. When President Obama was elected, Republicans had no idea in Congress what to do about that. He was incredibly popular. He came in on a wave of overwhelming support. Republicans were paralyzed with fear. The only thing they could think of to do was use the power of the Oversight Committee to just try to do death by a thousand cuts. And what we saw were things like Operation Fast and Furious, which culminated with the, uh, the Attorney General being held in contempt of Congress. We saw things like Benghazi. We saw things like investigating the IRS. And over time, a narrative built that was very powerful for Republicans. They didn't do a whole lot when they had the reins of power. They didn't pass a whole lot of legislation. They didn't get a lot of things done. But the one thing that unified this group was the oversight investigations at a time when the leadership was under fire, they were under attack from their own caucus, the Tea Party was fighting with John Boehner. The only thing that unified them was the oversight committee's work. That's what they'll look to replicate this time down if they take back power. Mm. Co-founder and co-editor of The American Prospect, Robert Kuttner, thank you very much. He's the author of the recent book, Going Big, FDR's Legacy, Biden's New Deal, and the Struggle to Save Democracy. Kurt Bardella, thank you as well. Good to see you.